Well, um, today, Paul, we will continue our series on having a heart of worship. If you have your Bibles, since it's already 1133, Psalm 34, verse 1, and the King James Version, Psalm 34, verse 1, King David said, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. So I don't know how often do we praise God and have His praises in our mouth. And remember the song that we just sang a few, a couple of minutes ago. It's, it's your breath. It's your breath in my lungs. In Psalm chapter 8, it says, you have ordained praise. Well, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, you have ordained praise. In other words, the Lord already put the praise in our mouth, in our life. We have the praise there. We have the worship there. And of course, not the whole time we get to praise God. That's why this verse is very powerful. David said, it doesn't matter what he's going through, what I've been through, going through, or in point situations, you know, it's a life, you know, whether he's up or down, whether he's feeling good or not. He said, I decided that I will bless the Lord at all times or continually. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise continually be in my mouth. Praise has to be spoken. Praise has to be heard. Well, although our, our, our focus is not entirely on praise, but sometimes they overlap. Thanksgiving praise and worship. And when we worship, we're simply giving thanks, giving praise. When we praise, uh, when you bow down, simply worshiping or showing worship, or it's an act of worship, Nepal. Uh, it's, since we're wor uh, talking about worship, it's so hard to define what worship is all about. It defies the definition the point worship. It's so deep. Uh, but somehow we have a little bit of uh, uh, illumination. I mean, when it comes to worship, in the past few Sundays, we get to talk about different subjects on worship that will help us in our walk with God. Let's bow our heads and let's pray. Father, Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus, we would like to commit this service to you and the preaching of the word. Our hearts are open, and even those who are online joining us today, and we are ready to receive. In Jesus' name, amen. It is easy to worship God when everything is doing good in our life. You have a lot of food, you have your health, relationships is doing okay, you get along with people, you have your job, you have a nice house, well, you have your family, and it is really good, I mean, it is easy. It's not really a sacrifice sometimes to praise God. Kasi okay naman po yung lahat, di ba? But yung pong circumstances natin, yung situations natin, na po, are not always pleasant. It's not like our life is always uh, uh, like you feel that you are on the, top, on the top of the world, that you are always feeling jumping and rejoicing and shouting the praises of God or feeling excited. Na po. Circumstances change from time to time. Na po. It's not always pleasant. So how do we worship when our circumstances is not really good. Well, right now, obviously, globally, Nepal, since last year, it wasn't really good, even for believers. So what do you do? Ano po yung gagawin natin? Anong gagawin ninyo? What do you do when everything around you is just falling apart? Agulo po. What do you do when everything around you po is falling apart? Ito po, dito po nagiging malalim, malalim yung worship, yung pagsamba. Okay? Because the deepest level of having a heart of worship, which is yung po yung series natin, is you're putting your trust in God in spite of the trial and the pain, in spite of chaos, in spite of uncertainty, in spite of your doubt, you're surrendering to God while you are going through some testing and you are loving Him even when you don't feel the love that God has for you. 
Yeah, again, ulitin po yun. Even you love God even when you don't feel yung pong pag-ibig ng Diyos because when you are down and you are depressed and you are confused no po, or when you are going through tough times, you don't feel the love of God. Diba? Yung pong relationships natin even with other people or especially our relationship with God, no po, this will be tested from time to time. Especially while we start, while we're still here on earth, it will be tested by separation. It will be tested by there's a feeling of silence between you and God, like parang po yung silent years na tinatawa God. Where are you? I cannot feel you. I cannot see you. Hindi ko nakikita yung hand mo, yung pagkilos mo, no absent ka Lord or parang ano bakas yung panginoon? Na pagod na buo ba kayo sa akin, no? So yung pong relationship natin, it will be tested with a period of silence. And sometimes we, it's uh, tested uh, with, uh, uh, with distance. Well, you're feeling like, you feel like God is a million miles away from you. In our relationship with God, we won't always feel His presence. Hindi po natin palaging mararandaman ang presensya ng Diyos. Hindi po ako naniniwala na lahat po tayo ngayon dito, every one of us sitting here in this building, you feel the presence of God. Diba? O sino pong honest enough dito na sasabihin, hindi ko nararamdaman yung presence ng Lord ngayon. <laughs> Ang pakiramdam ko ngayon, masakit. No? I mean, uh, parang manhid, no? Yung mga ganon. From, from time to time, no po. Okay? In our relationship with God, you won't feel that. Yung mga confirming emotions na po, yung confirming parang love ng God, unlike when we first got saved na po, parang feel na feel natin every day, 24-7, a week, a month, a year, no? Uh, nung pong bago tayong mga Kristiyano. Pero later on, di po natin na-feel yun. So, doon po nagiging mahirap yung pagsamba when you don't feel His presence. That's when worship gets to be difficult gets to be tough. Po. It will be tested, yung relationship natin, and po yung periods of separation, periods of waiting, hindi mo alam, one week, one month, Lord, ang tagal naman, God. When, 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 how? Ano po? So at times when it feels like He's taking too long to answer our prayer, when you are in pain and you feel that you are about to die, you want God to answer your prayer, not next month, at this very moment. Kasi you're feeling that you cannot continue anymore. You feel like you're not gonna see another week in your life, di ba? So if God will ever intervene at kung magpapakita at mararamdaman, makikita niyo yung kapangyarihan ng Diyos, hindi bukas, kailangan ngayon. Di ba? So this kind of relationship we have with God and the more you go deeper in your relationship with Him, it will be tested with periods, periods of separation po and waiting Uh, at times, yung pong feeling natin as if uh, God is not nowhere to be found, feeling natin, para na akong pinabayaan ng Diyos. No? Kinalimutan na ako. Panginoon, I've been serving you. I've known you for so many years. Bakit, bakit nagka-COVID ako? No? I've been praying. I confess all my sins. Maski yung mga kagalit ko, iniisip ko na at pinatawad ko na lahat, Lord. I've been praying. Gumaling ako sa the COVID na to. Up until now, I'm still feeling worse. I feel like I'm dying slowly. Nagpa-pray over na ako, nag-fasting. Pinost ko na sa Facebook, ipasa nyo sa iba. Ang dami na nagpipray sa akin, hindi lang few people, about hundreds and thousands of people, different pastors sa kanilang mga congregation. No? Lord, asan ba kayo? Kinalumutan nyo na ako. You know, remember, I've been serving you for, 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 for so many years. I've committed my life to you. How come I can't even feel your presence? You know what? And we, we have loved ones, and there are people, believers and even pastors, been through that. Others lost their lives, no, Paul, during this pandemic. And I, be, I believe they felt that. And others did complain. There's nothing wrong with complaining before God, showing your emotion, no, Paul, just like in the book of Psalms, diba? Right? But it's how you end your complaint. Because if you read the book of Psalms, hindi po nagsisimula man na negative, but it ended up, I mean, uh, later on, makita po ninyo isang chapter, nagtatapos siya ng positive, di ba? Yet I will. 
Yet I will trust you, Lord. Yet my, I put my hope in you. Diba? So it's okay, it's okay to release those kind of emotions sa Panginoon. Remember David, he is a man after God's own heart. Kung mag-iisip po tayo na isang tao na masasabi natin worshiper of God is David. Psalmist siya, and most of the, uh, I mean, Psalms, the book of Psalms, he wrote it. He, he wrote it diba? So the way he he prays and worship God in the first, second Samuel, na po, uh, very, I mean, expressive po si David. Even as a king, he danced before the Lord, before people, na po, uh, just wearing an ephod. No? So hindi po niya kinayiyan, Panginoon. So he's a man after God's own heart. He himself was a worshiper of God. Na po. He also operated in the prophet, uh, priest, na po, and king. So he experienced that. Okay? Yet David, if you will read the book of Psalms, frequently po, nandiyan po yung complaint niya. No? Yung complaint niya, kasi he'd been through a lot. Okay? He never did anything wrong, yet Saul and his armies are trying to, uh, they're hunting David just to kill him. Diba? So this is what he, he said no po, when he feel that as if God is, not, is nowhere to be found. I mean, uh, based sa feelings po niya, wala yung presence ng God, no? So, mababasa po ninyo ito sa mga ibang mga scriptures sa book of Psalms. Sabi niya, Lord, why are you standing aloof? And you're so far away. God, why, why are you hiding your face when I needed you the most? Hindi kita makita, Lord. Wala yung face niyo, no? So, why have you forsaken me? That, that, the scripture is a prophetic scripture. Why have you forsaken me? Why do you remain so distant? Ito po yung pakiramdam ni David. Nung times na nag-celebrate po siya nasa temple, na po, um, and, and using his, uh, his uh, heart, praising the Lord, for sure, feel na feel po yung presence ng God. But when he is going through tough times, living from caves to caves, running away from soul or hiding from soul. This is what he felt. Why do you remain so distant? Why do you ignore my cries for help? Lord, why have you abandoned me? Abandoned me. Well, alam, na po, alam na po natin na God never abandoned David. God is always there. It's just the feeling of an abandonment. Yun po ang po ni David. Because we, we, we are human beings. We, are, we have emotions. And we don't relate to God based on our feelings. Otherwise, many times, masasabi natin ang God, wala sa buhay natin or hindi natin kasama, di ba? Um, wala yung presence niya sa buhay po natin. Okay? So God never really left David and He doesn't leave you and me. Repeatedly po, Ang pangako ng Panginoon, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Repeatedly. Promises after promises. Okay? Hindi po niya pinangako na palagi mong mararandaman yung presence ko. Okay? Hindi po niya pinangako yun. Kung misa nga magkasama na kayo, may time na hindi mo na mararandaman yung presence ng tao eh. Kasi may pinagdadaanan ka. Pero kasama mo na, di ba? <laughs> right? Maski katabi mo, even the person next to you, the boy, you won't even feel their presence although they are sitting next to you. Why? Because you're going through something. You're focused on what you're going through. Limot mo na meron pala na kami kasama ka, nandiyan yung presence niya. So, consume ka ng sarili mong feeling of hurt and pain. Okay? So there are times na po, sa buhay po natin when God seems to be absent in our life. Maybe at this very moment, po, parang hindi nag-opisina ang Panginoon. <laughs> Dahil na-stress siya sa COVID na to. No, it's almost two years. I think I need to take a day off. No? Kaya a lot of people are calling. They don't even feel, God, why is this happening to us? Bakit damay kami yung buhay namin? We are believers dito sa nation na to na nagkakagulo. No? Why are we affected? Why is it that we need to suffer as well? Okay. Where are you, God? So, a lot of people are crying out to God nowadays. Alam niyo naman po, it's so easy to question God 
whenever things are not doing really good. But well, where are you? I mean, when everything is doing well. Where are we? Huh? But sometimes it's really good when we go through tough times because that's when we get to be vulnerable and we tend to come to the end of ourselves and we start looking to God. Because we cannot rely on our resources and our health and our money or our job. And then talagang, I mean, even celebrities, even those uh, rich and famous na po, when everything stops, everyone is affected. Especially when, when your health diba? is affected, the more, uh, you will not be thinking about your riches. That's when people are calling upon the Lord. Alam po niyo, there is a person in the Bible na po na pambihira yung po yung klaseng pananampalataya. Mayroon po siya sa Panginoon. Yung buhay niya sa Panginoon. Okay? What we're going through is this is very normal. It's a normal part of our life as a believer. Na po, in the world, you will have tribulation. Okay? And we're still here in this dark and evil world and we'll go through, uh, I mean, sin is still present in this world. So we will all go through it. It is painful. But it is absolutely vital po, so that our relationship with God po, will be strengthened. Uh, it's very vital po in our faith para magrow po tayo. So knowing this gave Job hope. And you all know Job. Na po, it gave Job hope when he could not feel God's presence in his life. Okay. So this uh, test and trials and difficulties is just a normal part of our walk with God. Po, hindi po natin pwedeng, walang shortcut. We will all go through it. Mahirap po, mabigat, at uh, parampasan natin yung buong daigdig na po. So knowing that you will go through this, I mean Job, knowing that he will go through this to po, where he could not feel God's presence in his life, he said, it was Job chapter 2, verse 3 to I mean, 23, verse 8 to 10. Po. <clears throat> I've been reading you pong, I just in one sitting po, while I was in a parking lot, I read the, the book of Job. I read it a lot of times. And the more you read the Bible, it's really powerful. It will come alive. I was just waiting on the parking lot. I was able to read the book of Job, the whole thing. And then if I'm not satisfied with this version, NLT, I will go to Good news translation. And need more clarification, I go amplified. Contemporary English version. NCV, New Century Version. And then I will play it audio and at the same time read it. It's more powerful. Read it, I mean, listening it through audio, playing it through audio, and then looking at it, and then zooming it out. More powerful. <laughs> I tell you, uh, there is some, something about zooming it, making it bigger, diba? may impact. So the, what, that's what I do. Diba? For me, I don't know if it's for me, but it's impact. So I've been reading it. Uh, it was really a powerful story. I've read it a lot of times, but the more you get back to it, the more you niyo. Very powerful. So when Job went through a lot, everything falling apart, Job, I mean, uh, he has this hope from God. Okay? He doesn't feel God's presence. And he said in chapter 23, verse 8 to 10 in NLT, he said, I go, to e I go, I go east, but God is not there. I go west, but I cannot find him. I do not see him in the north. for he is hidden. I turn to the south, but I cannot find him. But he knows, but he knows where I am going. It doesn't matter if I can find God in the north, on the east, west, north, and south. Well, what is important? That God knows where I am at. He knows where I'm going. He knows what I'm going through. That's the important because we cannot really figure out God. He is God. Especially with our feelings. Hindi po natin may explain how He works, but one thing we know is that God is working and He knows where we are. What kind of suffering that we are going through. 
Ano man pong tough situation or mga circumstances na po na meron po tayo. Yun po yung magandang news dito. But he knows where I'm going. And when he has tested me like gold in a fire, di ba mga gold po tayo? So dumadali sa iyo po tayo through the? Dadaan po tayo sa? Apoy, sa ayot sa gusto ninyo. The more you get close to God, the more you follow Him, you wanted to know Him, you will go through the fire. But the Bible says in Isaiah, when you go through the fire, you will not be burned. Diba? When you pass through the waters, you will not be drowned. Wow! Tindi po nun, di ba? So when He has tested me like gold in the fire, He will pronounce me innocent. So when God seems a million, million miles away, we may not feel, and probably we, we feel that He's so angry and disappointed with us, no? or maybe God is disciplining me because I have done this and I have done that. No? There's sin in my life. You know, this feeling of abandonment from God has nothing to do sometimes with our sin. It's just something that happened. We cannot control the situations around us. Around us, we cannot control people. You cannot control the government, diba? It is one we all must face. Will you continue to love God? Will you continue to obey God, to trust God, to worship God, to thank Him, to praise Him when you're going through this? Will you continue doing what you're doing to do that will please God even when you don't have any sense of His presence or visible evidence of His work in your life? magpupuri pa rin kaya tayo sa Panginoon. Now, the most common mistake po we make is we try to seek an experience po as a believer, di ba? Rather than seeking God. So sometimes we're seeking for a feeling, for an experience po, in a service. If we felt something, we would say, well, the worship today is very powerful. The glory of God is in our midst. No? The worship leader is on fire. Di ba? I feel it. I got goosebumps. And then you say, how, and when somebody asks you during the week, how's the worship? How was your Sunday? It was powerful. Felt the presence of God. You're talking about your feelings. No? Well, I'm not saying that God is not there when there, we have those emotions and feelings. What about when we don't have those kind of emotions and feelings in the service? Do you mean God is not here? Or you can worship God when you don't have those? If you lift your hands, you're not even feeling it. You didn't worship the Lord. Well, of course, between you and God, if you really are worshiping God, no? Despite of your feelings, okay? So that's, that, that's what happened because we're seeking for an experience, no? Yeah, see, he wants us to sense his presence. And there are times that we, we get to sense his presence, but he's more concerned that you trust him than you feel him. Because our relationship of, uh, to God is based not on our feelings. It is based on faith. For without faith, it is impossible to please God. And that's why the Apostle Paul said, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Our walk with God is a walk of faith. It is not a walk of feelings. Oh, you still praise God. You still believe that God is with you no matter what. Right? You don't, you don't feel excited today. It's not like we're jumping and screaming earlier. No? But that doesn't mean you cannot worship the Lord. You have to will it. I will bless the Lord. You have to decide. You don't allow your feelings to decide for you or the person next to you or the song leader to decide for you whether you worship God or not. No, you have to decide. No, Lord, in spite of whatever I'm going through or whatever I'm feeling right now, I decided that I will. It's a knock of your will. I don't feel like I'm in pain. I will bless the Lord at all times. So yung pong situation the po, that will stretch your faith natin most will be those times when life is falling apart. Like Job. It's like parang, parang feeling natin pinabayaan tayo. Para yung mother eagle, di ba? Pag tinitrain po yung mga eaglets ba tawag doon, yung mga anak po nila, they will drop them. <laughs> di ba? <laughs> so, feeling po ng mga baby nila, ah, pinabayahan ako ng mami ko. No, pero ang mangyayari, pff, bigla, bigla pong 
Uh, na doon po, ang bilis nung, uh, nung, nung mother eagle na po para i-rescue po. Diba? It's not that uh, uh, they wanted to make fun of their, of the, of their uh, ano po, yung mga eaglets na yun. Kundi, no, they're, they're training them. But they won't learn how to fly <laughs> if they won't drop them. <laughs> In purpose. Okay? Lumaki po tayo, dumaan tayo sa ganoon. It doesn't mean na hindi na po tayo nahawakan ng mami natin habang naglalakad po tayo eh. Hindi na, pinabayaan na tayo. No? <laughs> diba? No! They are watching over us while we take the step. While we, we, we are trying to pull all, both of our legs together and trying to get up, learn how to walk, they're watching over us. And when you fall, then you, you know, uh, some, they know diba? that you will get up. They're always there. If you get hurt, they will there to embrace you. Again, to encourage you once again to get. So everything that is going on sa buhay po natin, it is not because God has forsaken us and letting us to go on our own. God is always present. Oh. Now this happened to Job na po. On a single day, he lost everything. He, have everything. he has everything. He is the richest man in town na po. He's got his wonderful family. He's got his 7,000 sheep. I think 5,000 camels. 500 uh, oxen. 500. Uh, I don't know if that's good. <laughs> and he lost it. In one day. In a few hours. I don't know. Even if it took two hours. Well, the first person delivering news about what happened. Uh, about to finish. His report, another one, came one next. Like the, the second one came and reported bad news. And even before he told Job about the bad news, sec, uh, the third one came in again and reported another bad news. So on a single day, he lost everything. His family, his business, his, uh, his health, and everything he owned. His children. And most discouraging for Makikita po natin, if you read the book of Job, for 37 chapters, God said nothing. He lost everything for 37 chapters. He never heard anything from God. And yet, you know, he knows that he is innocent. His friends are telling him, you know, Job, Job the reason you've been through this, you, you are going through tough times, the reason you have this trial is because you did something. Why don't you admit it? You're not innocent, Job. You're not God. But Job can't find anything wrong that he did. He knows he is innocent, and yet he lost everything. Well, except his wife. <laughs> I don't know the purpose of that. Bakit ni spare na bang ng demonyo yung wife ni Job? Tinira yung wife eh. Okay, now lang po magbasa ko, magbasa ko ng role ng wife niya. Bakit natira, no? Misan niisip ko rin yun. Bakit kaya natira yung asawa ni Job? Lahat na wala bukod sa asawa. Uh, pwede kang bu buo ng ibang mensahe doon. Okay? So, what do you do when life falls apart? And for sure, na-experience po yon, Na-experience ninyo. You lost a loved one. Yung sudden loss of a loved one. Your health. Na po, meron po dito. Naka-experience even recently. Diba? So, what do you do? You don't understand what's happening in your life. What do you do? How do you keep your eyes and your focus on God, on Jesus, when your pain is just screaming at you, when you are ill, or when you have a bad report from the doctor? You do what Job did. Dito po sa Job chapter 1, verse 20. Then Job arose. Ito po yung maganda. When he lost everything, Job arose. Just like David when his first son with Bathsheba, because of the sin, and he needed to lose his, job, his son. While his son was sick and dying, he fasted and prayed and put on sackcloth and asses. But when he heard that his son died, he got up, take a bath, put on perfume, more your God. And this is what Job too did. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped. 
He is grieving. Ito po yung, I mean, in ancient times, this is what they do. When they are in grief, no po, they, they, they will rent their mantle and shave the, their head, no po, and just, that's what they do. But Job did, other than that, he fell to the ground and worshipped. How can you worship God when you lost everything in just one day? How can you worship God, diba? Right? So he grieved. He felt it. He's in pain. But instead of becoming angry and bitter with God because of the pain, he poured his brokenness and the pain out to God through worship. Diba? Ganun po yung mga na-experience natin. We are in pain. We are crying. And then we bow before God. We turn to God. And we just release everything to Him. You were able to worship in spite of pain. In spite of a loss of a loved one. In spite of a lot of questions. You were able to worship God. You still prayed. I'm not saying it was easy. It was difficult. But you were able to say, God, I worship you. I, I still turn to you. My, my eyes are on you. I know you are here. I don't feel you, but I know and I believe that you are with me with this. So worshiping God actually is a statement of faith. Trusting the Lord in spite of pain or heartache, na po, on losses po natin, is a statement of faith. Na po. This sounds like a contradiction po. When you say, I'm trusting God, when I, even when I feel like I'm dying, I will still trust God. Even the medical doctor said, I only have a few days to live. I will still trust God. Huh? And this is what we needed to do, Nupo. just like Job. <clears throat> you need to worship first. When you're going through tough times, you decide that you will worship. I will bless the Lord at all times. Lord, I don't feel you. I felt abandoned, forsaken. I cannot see your face, unlike before when I go to church. But now, it seems like I'm in for weeks now, Lord, for months. I don't really feel like I used to when I go to church. But I still worship you. I'm still, our th I'm, I'm still thankful for my life. Um, so worship God when you're going through hard times. And the next one, Always focus or keep your eyes on God's unchanging nature. Regardless of circumstances and how you feel, you need to hold on on God's unchanging character that God is good. God is good. He loves you and me. He is with me. He knows what I'm going through and He cares. And He has a good plan for my life. Maybe yung mga feelings ko opposite talaga dun sa, sina, dun sa sinasabi ng word. But I don't rely on my feelings. So when Job's life is falling apart or when his, his life actually fell apart, Job still found some things that he could praise God for. Or he could worship God. That he, God is loving, that God is good, he's powerful, and he knows everything that is happening in his life, every detail, and that he is in control, and that he has a plan for his life, and that God will save him. It's just a matter of time. The boy, people read those chapters in the book of Job, Nepal. So focus on God's nature. He is God. And that is nature to love you. His love doesn't base on what you do. And you think God, uh, God, God doesn't love you anymore or He loves you less because of some sin that you have committed. No, His love is unchangeable. Yung pong pag-ibig natin ang nagbabago. I don't care what you have done earlier, this morning. God still sees you the way you are. Diba? Hindi ba magandang news yun, diba? Even when you don't feel like worshiping God and you're, you're struggling to say, God, I thank you, I still trust you, I still love you. Even when you are pouring out your doubts, diba? And you are complaining to God, God, why did this happen to me? I am innocent, just like Job. Well, complain na kayo ng complaint. God still loves you. 
He still cares for you. And He's just looking at you and say, diba? Maybe it's hard to understand that me loving you in spite of what you're doing, your attitude toward me, but that's the truth. That's who I am. Huh? So focus on God. Focus on His unchanging nature. And I like the third one about when you're going through tough times, when worship is but difficult, it's a difficult thing to do, Nabo. You must patiently rely on the promises of God. Okay? Now, we all have the promises of God. And sometimes you wanted the fulfillment and you wanted it to happen now because you have a need, right? Kung masakit ang ipin yung ngayon, Lord, ayaw ko pong mawala yung sakit bukas. Ngayon kailangan mo, wala yung sakit ng ngipin ko. No? Ngayon ako nagsasuffer. Diba? But we all knew, I mean, God is true to His promises. They are yes and amen. Right? So the thing is, sometimes we are impatient. Yung time, po nat, yung time ng God, iba sa time po natin. Okay? So during tough times, you must patiently rely on the promises of God, not your own emotions, not your own feelings, and realize that He is doing His work. Realize that he is doing his work. And realize that he, will, he is watching his word to fulfill it. He is true to his promises. We may not be true to our word, but God is king. He is God. If he said it, he will do it. You can count on his word. You, maybe you cannot count on your, husband, your spouse's word, but you can count on God's word. If he said, I will never leave you, he is always there. He will never, never leave you, regardless of your feelings. In Hebrews chapter 6, verse 12, it says, That ye be not slothful, but followers of them, the boy in the Old Testament, those who trusted God, through faith and patience, inherit the promises. Kailangan po natin yung patience. You need to be patient. You need to learn how to wait. And remember, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. The, the more you get empowered, you may want the answer now, but that is your time. That is based on what you, you think. Say intelligence, or because of your, what you're feeling. You need to be rescued. You want, it, you want it now. But God knows much better. Mas alam po niya yung situation niyo. We are not God. So he's always asking us to trust him. Not just say his promises, but trust in what you're saying when you confess God's promises. A relationship based on just emotion, okay, is very shallow. So yung pong, uh, yung pong promises ng God, uh, don't just say it, don't just rely on God's promises when you're feeling like relying on it. Okay, when you're feeling excited, even when you're struggling, when you are in pain, uh, when you don't see the, sabi nga, the end of the tunnel, you see, don't see the light in the, ten, the end of the tunnel, you, you have to be patiently rely on God's promises regardless of your emotion. Don't let your heart be troubled. Believe in me, God's in John chapter 4. Circumstances cannot change the character of God. God's grace is still sufficient every day. And His power is made perfect in your weaknesses. The more you get to experience the power of God, the grace of God, the more you feel weak, unable to solve your problem. But simply relying on God, the more you will see His power and His greatness. You have seen that. I have seen that. And there's someone watching, you have seen that in your life. So ito pong kalaban natin yung feelings natin. No? Again, our relationship with God is based on faith, not on feelings. No? So in the absence po ng confirming circumstances no po, sa buhay ni Job, he rely and stand on God's word. Ito pong sinabi niya, Job 23 verse 12, I have not departed from his commands. Imagine yun, no? He lost everything. Tapos boils and uh, uh, sa katawan po niya, nandiyan po yung mga uh, skin disease na po. 
He said, I have not departed from his commands, but have treasured his words more than daily food. How is God's word and his promises in our life? Kapag may matindi po tayong problema, pag may tests and trials. No? Ano po yung promises ng Panginoon? Ito po ba yung pinangahawakan natin? Are we trusting God's promises? This trust in God's word caused Job to remain faithful even though nothing made sense. It doesn't really make sense. He knows he is innocent. He helped a lot of people. He's a good father. He is a good husband. Maybe he's a good community leader. It doesn't make sense, Lord. Why did I lose everything it just in a day? If you, will, if, if you will read the book of Job over and over again, you get to have an idea when you go through tough times. At least you get a picture. You get to imagine, oh, this is, actually, it's not God. It's the devil. No? Well, chapter one, okay, it's not, it's not God did this to Job. It is the devil who did it to Job. Uh, you have to read the, the, the book of Job. Okay? Kasi kung portion by portion lang po, we think ang God ang nag, nagtanggal at nagnakaw, pumatay. No, no, hindi po yan. The, the thief came to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. So his faith here in chapter 13, verse 15, his faith was strong in the midst of pain. Because it's, he said, Kita po ninyo kung paano katindi yung pananapalatay niya. God may kill me, but still, I will trust Him. Ganun po katindi. And you know the reason Job was able to do this? He worshipped when he lost everything in a single moment. He focused on God's character, His nature. He focused on God's promises. His faith was strong because in chapter 1, it was his usual. Remember when he said, Have joy? It's a Thanksgiving. See, Daniel? Because it was his routine, it was his lifestyle, the offering praises to God. It's not something, the reason he was able to overcome and stand in faith strong in God's promises, and he kept his focus on God. It didn't happen on a single day that he was able to do that. It was already his lifestyle. It is something that he does even when his life is good. When his family are there, when he is healthy, all his possessions are there, he is already opening up praises and worship to the Lord. It is not something that he pulled it up somewhere now that he's in need of God and then he can just simply stand on the word of God. And that is the problem with a lot of believers. When tough times come, without their usual thing, that he, I mean, you're operating or lifestyle of praise, they think they can simply stand and put their faith in the promises of God. It doesn't happen that way. It takes a while to build your foundations of faith. And that's why when you go to church, when you read the Bible, even when things are doing great, that's when you're just laying your foundation. You cannot simply build your house while the storm is raging and the wind is blowing your house. No, after they built it, someone built on the sand, someone built on the rock, and then the storm came. And then you saw the result. You don't build your faith during the storm, prior to the storm. And no wonder other believers are not truly affected with COVID. Even when they got the COVID. When people are panicking, they didn't panic. Although they felt it. When people are afraid and are confused, believers who already made a preparation, it, already, it is already their lifestyle and building themselves on the word of God. I'm not saying they didn't feel fear, but they did something about the fear. But the believers who doesn't who are on and up, on and up, up and down, up and down, relying on their feelings, they never get prepared. They are so afraid. They are worse than unbelievers. The kind of fear that they have. They don't want to go out. They're panicking even with toilet paper. 
A believer filled, anointed by God. Nagpapanik po dahil wala ng toilet paper. I mean tissue. Toilet tissue ba? <laughs> so you can focus on God, stand on His promises, and worship Him in spite of pain. And even when you feel like you are dying, when it was your lifestyle of blessing the Lord at all times, and His praise shall continually be in your mouth. Kaya yung iba po walang mapul, wala kang marinig na word of God sa kanila kapag may pinagdadaanan kasi, ito po yung kasi, wala silang time sa word ng God. Kapag feeling lang nilang feel kong pumunta sa church, doon pupunta sa church, walang sacrifice. Pag tinatamad ako, hindi na ako pupunta ng church. So, you know, I mean business with God. No, parang, uh, wow, kung okay, oh. gusto kong pumunta, gusto kong pumunta. Ngayon ko, hindi ako pupunta. No? Now, kapag may pinagdaanan po kayo, doon po ulilitaw ngayon kung anong foundation natin. Brother Floor, he's going through some tough times. And you know why, why he was able to, to pose and to be positive and to stand on the promises of God? It's because already it's his lifestyle. He's already offering sacrifices of praise. Kung may mga pinagdanan po siya noon. Di ba? I'm not saying that he doesn't feel fear or I've, I've been through a lot too without you knowing it <laughs> because I don't have to tell the world about it. I felt like there was some, a lot of times in my life I thought that's it, I'm going to die. There are only few people who knows about that. I don't post myself when I was in an emergency hospital. It was hard when you can breathe, when you are struggling physically, but then you still go and praise the Lord. I praise you, God. I still pray. I have your promises, Lord. By the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. You cannot always say it out loud, but since you already have your foundation for so many years, you have the word of God, and you can simply pull those promises. When your flesh is screaming at you, and when death is just screaming at you, overwhelming you, know, everything is dark. You know, since you already have those promises in your heart for so many years, you can just simply say, Lord God, I'm still here. I'm still relying on your promises. They are yes and amen. Himself took my infirmities and bore my sicknesses on the cross, and by whose stripes I am healed. I am getting better and better every day, although I feel worse. But I say what your promises are saying. I speak life to my body and not death. Lord John 10.10 10 is flowing in my bloodstream, the life of God. Top of my head, soles of my feet, Lord. Life is flowing. I'm redeemed from the curse of the law. It was his routine. It was a good routine. We have a lot of routine, but not really good one. But about a good routine in faith. When tough times, hard times comes, Nepal, we can still worship the Lord. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, even, God, even, even if God doesn't save us in this fiery furnace, Yet we will not bow down. Oh, King Nebuchadnezzar. Okay? We're not going to bow down. Yung commitment po nila sa Lord. Alam po nila ang kanino do yung worship. And remember what God has already done for you. Not only that He healed you, provided your needs, encouraged you, pulled you up, and a lot of things in the area restored your relationships. Remember what he has already done for you 2,000 years ago. He already did everything. Jesus Christ is not going to come back and pay the penalty, defeat the devil, or become sin again. He already did everything. He sat down on the right hand of God because he finished everything. It's a, he said while he was hanging on the cross, it is finished. Everything is done, paid in full. Salvation provided for, forgiveness of sins provided for. for the strength that you need, grace that you need, the power of God that you need. 
uh, healing that you need already provided for. Remember what God has already done for you. He already made it available. Salvation na po. Sabi nga, salvation is an all-inclusive term. It is not only talking about when you die, you go to be with God in heaven. No, there is deliverance, there is safety, there is soundness, there is prosperity, there is healing. This is in the Greek, sozo. Don't forget, every time that you have to always remember what Jesus Christ has done, may experience po palagi nyo yung victory. Because you remember the victory. You remember that Satan is defeated. Not going to be defeated. He already is defeated 2,000 years ago. He is like a roaring lion. Roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. So there are believers who will be devoured. And this guy was just like a roaring lion, trying to intimidate believer. So those believers will be devoured. But there are believers who will not be devoured because they knew who is the real lion of the tribe of Judah. Diba? Jesus Christ is the real lion of the tribe of Judah. So submit, resist, and he will flee from you. David said, when you go through the valley of the shadow of death, when I go through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Yan po yung pinanahawakan ni Haring David. When you feel abandoned by God, yet continue to trust Him, you worship God in the deepest way. And when you start telling other people about your experiences, mamamangha po sila. Ano yung ibig mo sabihin? Nakasamba, nakapagpuri ka pa rin sa Panginoon. Ito na nangyari sa inyo. Iniwanan ka na ng asawa mo. No? Na bankrupt ka na. Kung ano-ano na yung nangyari, no? Pinuri, pinuri mo pa rin ng Panginoon. Yes. Marami po mamamangha. Yeah. Well, sino po mag-glorify? Not you. But God will be glorified. When you feel abandoned by God, yet continue to trust Him and worship Him, po, and praise Him, you are getting deeper in your walk with God. So Job's experience brings up a question. Would you still worship God if everything in your, in your life was going wrong? Not as you have expected. It is easy to worship when everything is doing right. But the ultimate te test point of faith, not in, however, is whether you will still worship in difficult and painful times. Now Job chose choose to worship in the midst of his pain and you can make the same choices today in every situation will you still worship god god i don't know i don't understand what is happening right now what i'm going through but lord i still worship you and i honor you you are god you are sovereign you are supreme you are superior Amen. i still trust in you and submit to you Everyone will face times of testing. That is the time when it really matters that you have already made up your mind to worship God no matter what. Again, remember Job. When Job has his health, when he was looking after his family, and his blessings are increasing, <clears throat> even before the testing came, <clears throat> he made up his mind that he would worship God in every situation. So God is simply preparing you right now. Now that everything is okay, you have to make up your mind, I am going to worship the Lord, no matter what. Right now is the time for you to make up your mind to worship and praise God, no matter what the circumstances you face. And as you pray, as you turn to the Lord, as you fast, maybe some of you, you condition yourself to respond to difficult times with worship instead of anger, with faith instead of doubt, Nepal. with praise instead of bitterness. Even in a crisis, if you seek God's face, you will feel the love of God and comfort, and you will receive the wisdom that God has, and he will strengthen you to overcome and endure 
what is, whatever you need to endure. And sometimes the message is like this. It's not really that impactful for some because everything around you is okay. But when your life falls apart, will you still trust God? Will you still worship? Will you still show up in services? Will you still show up in prayer meetings? Will you still be there in a cell group? And sometimes when things are hard, that is the best time for you to start helping other people and looking for someone to help and to pray for and to encourage. Or will you be the person who will be hiding, feeling sorry, having self-pity, looking for sympathy, and you don't want to be with people? When that happened, what would you do? Will you worship? Or will you worry? So let's bow our heads. Sipin po natin for a few seconds. Lord, will I worship? Will I praise you? Will I trust in your promises? Will I still believe that Jesus Christ already done everything and I have the victory? Will I believe regardless of my feelings that God is with me, never leave me, have left me, nor forsaken me? When life is hard, when you're losing your health, will you still praise God? Nandun pa rin ba yung mga songs? Will you keep your songs a praise? Will you still speak God's word? Lord, during good times is an opportunity for us to build our foundation, Lord, to strengthen our faith. During those good times is a time of preparation. We need to get into the Word of God. We need to get into fellowship with other believers. We need to make a commitment to serve you when good times are in our life, Lord, we need to be meditating God's word. We need to be growing. Being disciple. Because we don't know when hard times will come. But sure they will come, Lord. Storms of life will come. And we want it to remain standing. Our foundation. We don't want to be moved. We want to be in faith not in fear, in worship, not worried. We still want to be the head and not the tail, to be above and not beneath. When storms come, Lord, when worship gets to be difficult, Lord, we still want it to be able to fall down and give you adoration and worship you. We still wanted to do what David did. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in my mouth. I will praise you, Lord, when I feel like you are so close to me, and I will keep praising you, Lord, even when I don't feel your presence. I will pr praise you, Lord, when, when I'm experiencing all these blessings, and I will praise you, Lord God. Even when it seems is where all the blessings is being taken away, I will still bless you, Lord, knowing that you have a plan and a purpose on what is happening. Because what you did to Job, Lord, is not you take everything and not give it back to Job, but you double what the devil has stolen from Job. You return it doubled, Father. All his possessions, his sheep, his oxen, his camels, Lord Jesus, you multiply it 
twice, Lord God. When Job remained faithful and he worshipped you, Lord, and he is trustful, Father, everything was returned double. And the same thing that you will do to us. We are not losing anything. During hard times, when we decide to worship you, we are gaining a lot. Lord Jesus, even material blessings, financial blessings, Lord. But the most important thing, God, that we've gained is our level of faith, a level of worship. That is far more greater blessing than financial blessings and material blessings. Is we were able to know you deeper and deeper. Thank you, Lord God. So, Father, I pray for my brothers and sisters, God, that they will remain in faith and be patient because you are with them and you know what is going on in their life and you have your own time for each and every one of us and i pray that they will remain strong lord jesus believing your promises that they are yes and they are amen and you are a god who will not break your promises you will fulfill it lord jesus so father we are standing on your word you are still god you're still sitting on the throne on the throne we bless you and we honor you today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. For those of you who are watching online, if you never made Jesus Christ your Savior and Lord, maybe you are a member of a church or you go to church or your parents bring you to the church from time to time, but you personally, you never believe or put your faith in Jesus Christ as your Savior and your Lord. Remember, he's the one who died for your sins. Because you need someone, you, you need a savior, someone who will save you from your sin. Every one of us, we are a sinner. Now, of course, if you're basing on, you know, if, if you think you are better if you're looking, if you will look at, at your neighbor, you think you are better than, than them. But based on God's standard, you are never better. You are still a sinner. Okay? So you can never make heaven your home if you are in that condition and stay in that condition without having Christ, you need Jesus Christ, Paul. How can I be saved? Well, you have to put your faith in Jesus, absolute trust, not in a religion, not in any organization, but on Jesus alone. So if you would like to receive that salvation, forgiveness of sins, eternal life, I would like to ask you to join me in this prayer from your heart. You have to believe, Nupo, and with your mouth you confess your faith. Say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me and you rose again from the dead for my justification. You provide eternal life and forgiveness of sins. You have forgiven my sins, my past, my present, and future sins. Today I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus, and I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. Therefore, I am saved. Because you said, Lord, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be saved in your household. I thank you for my salvation. I thank you for the forgiveness of sins. I thank you because I was made righteous before you. Not because of what I've done, but because of Jesus' righteousness. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, welcome to the family of God. That is the first time you turn over your life to Jesus. And I encourage you to, to look for a church, a local church. And if you have any Bible or Bible app, download it in your phone. But uh, you can start reading the, the Word of God, especially the book of John. The book. So God bless you. Thank you for staying with us. And for those of you who are with us in person, thank you for coming, Paul, for joining us. Enjoy your week. The book. And for those of you online, the book. and we'll see you again next Sunday. God bless you, Paul.